Lawfare, Part 1, The Espionage Act. In 2024, the Department of Justice, under the direction of Merrick Garland and Jack Smith, is attempting to prosecute Donald Trump using old laws that never applied to the President of the United States. Jack Smith, order in Donald Trump documents case based on flawed premise. The premise Smith is referring to is an interpretation of the Presidential Records Act argued by Trump's defense. The former president's attorneys argued that he had the authority to take and keep classified documents after he left the White House. Smith writes, that legal premise is wrong. The PRA's distinction between personal and presidential records has no bearing on whether a former president's possession of documents containing national defense information is authorized under the Espionage Act, and the PRA, the Presidential Records Act, should play no role to the jury. Now notice that Smith has a bizarre notion here on the rights of a suspect. For the entire history of the judicial system in the United States of America, the preponderance of rights goes to the defendant if you're attempting to imprison a defendant for committing some kind of monetary crime or murder or anything of a serious nature. The preponderance of any courtroom setting is designed, according to the U.S. Constitution, to favor the defense, the defendant. But Jack Smith has a unique view on what, who has the rights here. He says, and I quote, Whatever the court decides, it must resolve these crucial threshold legal questions promptly. The failure to do so would improperly jeopardize the government's right to a fair trial. Do you see that phrase there? Government's right to a fair trial? There's no such thing. The government does not have the advantage here in terms of the weight of the court. The weight of the court always leans towards the rights of the defendant. It is the government's job to prove that the defendant committed a crime. It is not the defendant's job to prove he did not commit a crime. That's how our legal system has always been structured, at least before Trump. Legal expert Julie Kelly. To clear up any confusion as to what special counsel Jack Smith sought to conceal in the classified documents case, this is what Smith told Judge Cannon in February 2024. 1. Defendants are not entitled to discovery of internal government correspondence. 2. The court should deny defendants' request for evidence of improper coordination with NARA, the National Archivist. 3. The court should deny defendants' request for evidence related to Trump's security clearance with the Department of Energy. They actually retroactively went back and changed Trump's security clearance as canceled, which is illegal to do, by the way. Number four, the court should deny defendant's request for evidence related to secure facilities at President Trump's residences. And number five, the court should deny defendant's request for production of materials concerning the search of Mar-a-Lago. Six, defendant's request for unredacted discovery of materials should be denied. Let's take a look at some of these materials. Almost as soon as President Trump left office, NARA started to work with the White House Office of Records Management on exaggerated claims related to records handling under the PRA. Now to understand the sequence here, we have to reconstruct what the National Archivist attempted to do with the Biden administration once Donald Trump left office. The National Archivist contacted the lawyers at the Biden White House and said, I've got dirt here that we can use to go after Donald Trump for the theft of classified records. The White House lawyers took that claim to the Department of Justice. Merrick Garland, the Attorney General of the United States, agreed with that and then sent to the FBI some kind of full investigation documentation. This was a special requirement which would then set into motion the FBI's ability to conduct a raid on a former president's house at Mar-a-Lago, which is what they did. All of this happened because the National Archivist believed that a crime had occurred where Donald Trump had retained classified materials and had not turned them over to the National Archives. Now, you might think this is an obvious thing, but not so fast. There is a law that was passed back in the 1970s called the Presidential Records Act, the PRA. This law permits a president 
to take any papers that he deems important for his historical legacy into his home and his personal custodianship. The issue here is that Jack Smith wanted to say that the PRA does not exist and that he's going to charge an ex-president under the Espionage Act. Well, here are the redacted documents obtained from Judge Cannon in this case. Let's take a look. Email from the National Archivist to the FBI. We received 15 banker's boxes and the weather map. This is from the FBI raid at Mar-a-Lago. My plan was to glance into each box before I shelved it so I could give y'all a high-level overview. Look down here. She's listing whether the materials she has found that were taken from Trump's residence were classified materials. Now remember, the National Archivist is a nonpartisan, nonpolitical government official. She should not be looking for anything to exonerate President Trump or to show Donald Trump as a criminal. That's not her job. But look at this line here. Thankfully, we got more than newspapers and magazines. There are plenty of original presidential records in there, and many contain Trump handwriting. Look at this particular paragraph, folks. Can you imagine the National Archivist of the United States writing such a sentence about obtaining the personal documents of Barack Obama. That would be impossible. Barack Obama is a Democrat. This National Archivist, apparently, is also a Democrat. She would never write such a sentence, gleefully stating, oh, I think we found some dirt to get Donald Trump on. This right here shows that the government of the United States is acting illegally in a partisan manner to get Trump. But let's go to page two. Here's the thing that directly contradicts what Jack Smith said, not only to the public, not only in his Miami indictment of Donald Trump, but what he also said to Judge Cannon of the Miami court case. Look at this line. There are also a good number of personal, political, non-PRA docs scattered through a few of the boxes. Why is this sentence important? The National Archivist and the FBI are now proven to have been discussing whether the documents seized from Donald Trump's home at Mar-a-Lago were PRA or non-PRA documents. This means they knew the legal protection that the PRA conveyed to ex-president Donald Trump. But if we go back to this story of Jack Smith complaining this year, he says, the PRA's distinction has no bearing on whether a former president's possession of documents is authorized under the Espionage Act. The PRA should play no role in the jury instructions. Well, sir, if that's the case, why on earth are you and the National Archivist carefully discussing whether the documents are PRA, covered under the Presidential Records Act? Let's go take a look at what this means. So you can search for this yourself. Just Google Judge Amy Berman Jackson, Judicial Watch, NARA. This was the court case brought by Judicial Watch wanting to take a look at Bill Clinton's personal classified records. In this case, the National Archivist had a very different approach. The National Archivist did not want to compel President Bill Clinton to turn over his classified materials that he retained once he left office. They refused to turn these over to Judicial Watch or to even enter them into the public record for safekeeping. So let's go back to this case. This is settled law. It's dated 2012. Amy Berman Jackson, District Judge. Plaintiff Judicial Watch brings this action against Defendant Nara, the National Archives. Plaintiffs asked the court to declare audio tapes created by Bill Clinton to be presidential records covered under the Presidential Records Act. Judicial Watch wanted to listen to these audio tapes, which recorded top secret and classified phone calls between Bill Clinton and heads of state, along with government officials in the United States government. So Judicial Watch is saying, hey, NARA, you need to go seize these tapes from Bill Clinton and put them into the public record. Now all Judicial Watch was asking that these, that these tapes be dumped into the Clinton Presidential Library for anyone to have access to them. Defendant, which is the National Archives, has moved to dismiss for lack of subject matter jurisdiction. The court will grant the motion to dismiss. This means that a federal district judge sided with the NARA, the National Archivist, not to compel Bill Clinton to turn over classified materials. 
The judge explained why in explicit legal detail. NARA does not have the authority to designate materials as presidential records. NARA does not have the tapes in question, and NARA lacks any right, duty, or means to seize control of them. Folks, this is a direct contradiction between what the National Archivist, with Joe Biden as president, had contacted the Biden administration about, that she demanded the right to seize Donald Trump's classified materials. She demanded that right with Trump, but a judge already ruled that the National Archives had no right, duty, or means to seize control of such materials from an ex-president. This is the power of the Presidential Records Act. Further down, under the statutory scheme established by the Presidential Records Act, the decision to segregate personal materials from presidential records is made by the president during the president's term and in his sole discretion. This is very clear, folks. What the judge, District Judge Amy Berman Jackson was saying was that on the day that Bill Clinton left office, any presidential documents or recordings that were still in the White House when Bill Clinton left office became public property under the custodianship of the National Archivist. Any classified recordings or documents that were in Bill Clinton's personal possession back at his home or his office became his personal property. This is the power of the Presidential Records Act, and it's intended to protect presidents. This is a power that presidents have that the rest of us do not. It's also a power that Vice President Joe Biden did not have when he retained classified materials at his beach house. That's a different topic entirely. Judge Amy Berman Jackson went further. She said the deputy archivist could not and did not make a classification decision that can be challenged here. Remember, Judge Amy Berman Jackson, probably a Democrat, National Archivist, probably a Democrat, they automatically side with Democrat Bill Clinton. The problem is, this ruling, carefully written out in 2012, to give Bill Clinton custody of his classified documents and recordings, applies to every future president for the rest of time. You cannot say this rule applies to Clinton, but this rule does not apply to Donald Trump. But that is precisely what Jack Smith is arguing in the Miami indictment. Special rules for Trump that don't apply to any other president. Judge Amy Ber Berman Jackson said further near the end of her, of her legal decision, even if the court agreed with plaintiff that the PRA authorizes the archivist to assume control of materials that fall within the definition of presidential records, regardless of how the president classified them, and it agrees with the plaintiff's questionable characterization of the materials, that being judicial watch, the court still could not order the relief plaintiff seeks because the only enforcement tool provided to the defendant under the Presidential Records Act are committed to the agency's sole discretion. Again, sole discretion, but in this case, the National Archivist is the person who says, no, I'm not going to compel Bill Clinton to turn over his classified documents. Are you kidding? I'm a Democrat and he's a Democrat. But then Donald Trump comes along and the National Archivist calls up the Biden administration and says, hey, get your lawyers on this. I think we can nail Donald Trump for, for being a, a criminal about to commit espionage. And they went ahead and did it. This is how the federal bureaucracy has poisoned the national discourse by assuming that they are able to operate as Democratic Party operatives when every federal employee signs a legal agreement that says, I will not engage in partisan political activities while on the job as a federal employee. Every one of them has to sign this document, including the National Archivist. But you can clearly see from this email, she wants to get Trump in a way that she would never apply to any Democrat ex-president. Why? So I'd like to close with Donald Trump on the same day of his Miami indictment. And in fact, Prosecutor Jack Smith sneakily withheld the charges until Donald Trump was in the actual courtroom because he didn't want Trump to be able to have any means of defending himself against charges he had never seen. Charging a former president of the United States under the Espionage Act of 1917 wasn't meant for this. An act for a crime so heinous that 
only the death penalty would do, and threatening me with 400 years in prison for possessing my own presidential papers, which just about every other president has done, is one of the most outrageous and vicious legal theories ever put forward in an American court of law. The Espionage Act has been used to go after traitors and spies. It has nothing to do with a former president legally keeping his own documents. As president, the law that applies to this case is not the Espionage Act, but very simply the Presidential Records Act, which is not even mentioned in this ridiculous 44-page indictment. Under the Presidential Records Act, which is civil, not criminal, I had every right to have these documents. The crucial legal precedent is laid out in the most important case ever on this subject, known as the Clinton Sox case. You know what that means? After leaving the White House, Bill Clinton kept 79 audio tapes in his sock drawer. They included discussions of U.S. military involvement in Haiti, discussions of U.S. foreign policy, both defense and offense, against Cuba, recordings of President Clinton's conversations with all of the many foreign leaders at the time. Think of that. Sensitive facts about trade negotiations taken from presidential briefings, discussions with the Secretary of State about conflict in Bosnia, and much, much more. Very big stuff. Not only was Bill Clinton never even considered for criminal prosecution based on the tapes he took, but when he was sued for them, he won the case. Judge Amy Berman Jackson's decision states under the statutory scheme established by the Presidential Records Act, the decision to segregate personal materials from presidential records is made by the president during the president's term and in the president's sole discretion. You're surprised to hear that, aren't you? Any normal administration, even an opposing one, would consider that to be the end.